Welcome back to another episode of The Rag Report with me, Sean Anderson, the CEO and founder of Hoxham Media. Um, I'm bringing you daily updates at the moment from leaders, suppliers, recruitment owners around the world that can offer advice, guidance, and, and their take on how we're approaching this unprecedented time. Today, I'm happy to be joined by Ryan McCabe, the CEO and founder of Odro, um, one of the market-leading video interview platforms, and uh, another another person like myself who's very vocal, is at events, he's always out there, um, and I believe we'll have a, a good insight into what's going on across the industry with, with the amount of customers and contacts he's got. So Ryan, thanks for taking the time, mate. No, thanks for having me on. No help. problem. Not a problem. Um, so what, like, first question I'm asking everyone is, how are you finding it the last week yourself? What's going on? Uh, it's, um, I think every supplier will say the same thing. We've got a view of the market rather than just what's happening inside one agency. And it's a lot of it's polarizing. So there's, there's a, a, more than you would think. Um, there's more agencies than you would think out there that are actually doing okay. Like people aren't pulling jobs. They're positively reacting to the situation. They're... Um, they're putting plans in place, they're helping, they're having to change, having to change the way they do things, but at the same time, there's still money on the table. Um, and then there's others that have been decimated. There's others that are just saying, I've had every job pulled, I don't know what to do, help. So yeah. um, I think it should hopefully stabilise over the next week till we find out what the picture really is. Uh, but for now, we're just trying to help as much as we can. Like we could everybody and i mean every single one of us or 31 of us every single one of us like four in the morning five in the morning right through to 10 at night just trying to help as much as we can it's the bottom line so is it is it clients reaching out to find out about how your platform works when they've ignored you for a year and now they're like shit i might need this or is it current customers wanting to know how to use it better what, what, what's the and that's both, right? So we we kind of realized this was hitting us. I don't know whether it was, it's earlier than some and later than others, but Wednesday last week, we went, hold on, this is going, this is going right? This is going to go. So um, myself and a couple of the leadership team just stayed in. Um, me and Dougie, people mostly know Dougie from LinkedIn and stuff. Mm. We sat in on Thursday night and we're like, right, what do we do? What can we do today to make this work? So we we rejigged, we rejigged everything. We made it just, we had to make it really easy for people to get on video now, like quickly. We were usually like four, five, six, seven weeks. You had to wait to be trained or be onboarded. And uh, and we had a really good system, really robust. We had to change it. So um, we ended up making daily training sessions for existing customers and new customers. That's the point I was getting at. Every, com every software that you buy has really good users and really bad users. People that say, I don't need this, mate, which is fine. We all know that. But those people now went, okay, I'm in. What do I need? So not only did we have to onboard all these new people that want Audro now, we also had to onboard that that percentage of people that said they didn't need it all the time. So we got a big influx and we've, we've adapted. We've got daily training sessions every day at 11 a.m. where everyone can come on. We can share best practice. We can talk about the training of the system overall. And then we're doing every day, we're giving people market materials to give to their clients and candidates to say it's okay. Like we know this; these are crazy times, but this is how we're going to get you through it. This is what we've got on video. Here's some new processes, all that sort of stuff. So um, it's been a mix of both. Are you finding that your clients are going to, like video is going to keep them busy, but do you think it will necessarily result in fees? Do you think clients will push the, play, push the button on decisions? So um, the, the certain clients are going to stop and certain clients are going to have to push the button on decisions. So I think the overall feeling at the moment is people will interview and some people are saying, but they won't offer on video, they'll wait to meet them face to face. Now, but even we were talking, this might last 18 months and you need to keep going. So it's, yes, I get people don't offer people over video today, but they'll have to. So they're going to need to do something if they want to keep the economy moving. So I believe that that will change. And I mean, we're already seeing it, already seeing people. I mean, we get two offers on video yesterday that we know of that people thought the job was going to be pulled. At the end of the day, there's distributed teams all over the world you know, there's people, and I'm sure we all know a lot of people that have IT teams across the world that have never met. Yeah. You're going to need to do it. It works. It's not ideal, but it works. Mm -hmm. So, and it's, it's educating clients that 
you know, the, the thing I always tell people is your client's goals aren't headcount. The client's goals are something else. It's making more of these parts or opening more of these brands, whatever it is. But headcount just supports that goal. So we need to talk to our clients and say, look, what is it you were trying to do this year? Why were you hiring these people in the first place? Yeah. And then we try and work out if we can get those people remote and if it's really important to get them in. Have you seen anyone that's particularly like approached it well? And any 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 good good examples of how maybe owners have just reacted and, and the, the, the way they're taking this news? I know this sounds really fluffy and I ain't a fluffy I'm a Glaswegian, right? I ain't a fluffy guy, but see just general concise plans, good communication, positivity amongst your team. That's the most important thing I think you can see. Think, talk to your team, tell them what's going on. Everyone's expecting people to start be facing hardship and stuff now, right? So just tell them early, get it all out in the open, um, and then have a, a short-term plan. This is what we're going to do today. Not here's our strategy to get through the virus. No one knows yet but your team can digest it if this is just what we've got to do today. And it's hard and it's quite macro, micro, whatever you want to call it, but it's it, we've got to communicate that well. Things like some of our clients are doing um, for the people that are being hired. So for example, warehouses, right? Warehouses are going through the roof. Supermarkets need more people to manage stock distribution. So one of the things that our guys are doing in that market is getting vetting forms. Have you been to these countries? Have any of your family members self-isolated? What have you done to protect? All that stuff. Give more value. Um, one of the other things that we... Uh, so I actually was going to shout about this today, but um, people need to look at being more valuable, right? Right now, you're a recruiter and you give people staff. You need to think of, if I can't give them staff, what can I give them? It's this blue ocean strategy thing and james osborne talks about this a lot yeah in the trn the blue ocean strategy now's the time to start getting that getting into that mindset um for example what people underestimate is that recruiters have a view of all of the market so you may as a, if you're a manufacturing engineer you have a view of your company and then what you hear about everyone else the recruiter deals with your company and all of your competitors and we know who works where so we should be using that information to help the industry we support. As a recruiter, if I was be if I was a manufacturing recruiter right now, I would be getting all the heads of HR from all the manufacturing clients I have into a room, into a video call, and having a virtual roundtable and saying, guys, I do, we need to help each other through this. This isn't a time for competition. Right, okay, what are you doing to save your people? What are you doing to save yours? How are we getting through to the next stage? And you can you can do that in a clever way. And the fact, that, the fact of the matter is, in four, five, six, 12, however long this takes to pass, the people who gave that value and kept everyone going through this are the people that are going to benefit from the bounce. Would you say that recruiters need to think about monetizing those other opportunities? I, I, I mean, so let's talk about a virtual roundtable. I would think of someone, I would think that would be pretty slimy of someone to try and do it. It would have the opposite effect on me. You're just trying to get money. Whereas if you have a roundtable and the subject isn't recruitment, and you go, man, I'm just trying to help you. The, the thing I'm thinking all the way through this, if we have your back through this now, as long as you have ours at the end of it, it will work. Mm. So I don't think you can monetize that. I think there will be things we can monetize. Maybe just not that one. I've not come up with the monetizing one yet. If I, if I do, I'll let everyone know. But, <laughs> but I, was, I, I was thinking like, you know, a client's going to try and monetize their version of Odro. Like, are they going to try and charge people to use it or something? Is it because... I mean, the Zoom out. There's loads of. Is it is it an opportunity for other people to? I guess that everyone everyone turns Audro or Interview into their own portal, right? They name it, and or a lot of clients name it, and they they put it on their website, they embed it. So they are, are anyone talking about doing stuff and things like that? Yeah, well, we've got a lot of clients who, um, like, we get a phone call about a year ago, and it was a, it was one of, one of the guys I know, and he said, "You must, you must be." absolutely petrified right there's all these video platforms coming up recruiters are doing it themselves and I'm like no no everyone they named to me was us yeah. because we let them completely brand it and the good thing for that is you can let your client use it and it's again another value add to say look we've got you through this like Skypes and Zooms and all that are fine like there's nothing wrong with them but if you're trying to manage an interview process and you're trying to get your face in front of candidates and clients share short lists look at analytics like still be a recruiter through this they don't cut the mustard. So they don't cut the mustard for your clients either. 
So if you can let them use your Audro system to say this is what you've got to use, we've already seen, I mean, I couldn't count, 15, 18, 20 people shouting on LinkedIn about doing that for their clients already. Uh, they don't charge for it, but they're just trying to, again, be visible, give value. Yeah. How are you guys working? I mean, you while you, you're always on video, you've got a big office space where you're all together every day, right? So how, how are you as a leader working through the whole Navic? You've got kids running around. How are you managing the working from home bit for your team and yourself? It's new for us. So we... I'm, I'm quite a, a, so a personal thing for me is I feel like I give a lot of energy to a room, but I take a lot of energy from a room. So if I go in, I'm like, I'm the loud guy, I'm getting everyone going, I'm happy, and you know, but it's because of, I'm like that because of what I get from them. So I'll personally find it quite difficult because I've not got people around about me, yeah. but we are doing um, a daily stand up and a daily wash up with the separate teams. But um, at 1.15 every day, we, we, we all come online. So we all come on video and we're doing, it's just fun stuff. It's like a virtual coffee, right? But we've done a pub quiz the past two days. Really? Um, and then we put a prize up for the person that wins it, wooden spoon for the least. Like, we're just trying to have a bit of fun with it. Um, the, team, the leadership team's great. Everyone knows what they're doing. Every team is working together for that day's goal. And then we find out what the next day's goal is the next day. I think that's what's keeping us going. Um, but at the 115s, we do the pub quiz, we have a laugh, and at the end of it, we just say, look, does anyone have anything that's going to be valuable for people? Has anyone heard anything from a client or a prospect that we can apply and share with the market? And we've had a couple of really good ones. That The, the virtual roundtable came out of that, mm. um, which is really good. What's your opinion on what's going to happen in the next few months? Obviously, you're not, you're not, a, you're not an expert in any of this, but what I'm no. just interested, what, what do you think is going to happen in the next three to six months for the, for the recruitment space? Um, I think that I was going to say something really high level of the good ones will survive but the point people need to it's really hard to say people are going to cut fast and deep they are right because it's scary but it's the people who are decisive at the start people who get get their ducks in a row today not tomorrow I'm speaking to people last week and they're saying, yeah, we're going to, I mean, we're not working from home, we're the working from home stuff set up just now, we're going to do that on Friday, we've got stuff to deal with. And I'm like, just, look, man, this is going to cause you serious problems. It's the people, the leaders who act now, make decisions, get it set up, move on. Those are the ones that are going to survive. Not just, sounds like I'm saying that for like, deciding to buy order and stuff, but I mean things like finances. Like, go now and pick what you'd like, for example, um, go to every every bank you've got an overdraft with and ask to double it or more. Go and phone every loan that you've got today and ask to pause the payments because if you wait for another week, you're going to join a queue of 2,000, whereas you do it today, you're number 10 in the queue, right? So You say that, I mean, I, I, I can't get older than mortgage company that, for the mortgage holiday. Like I've literally been trying every day, just can't get through. Yeah. So it's like, yesterday they announced that you know it's going to be available but how the fuck do you get it if it's if it's yeah. if you're on a end of it it needs to be an online open scenario right i i think they've got a the government have got to step in and pause payments in general like they have to pause inbound outbound payments like they almost just say stop everyone <laughs> otherwise yeah. you can't keep paying out if nothing's coming in it can't it can't be a one-sided affair um i don't know it's just it's crazy mate it's crazy I know um, from that, so, so like, I think what we realise is, and you look at all the recessions from hundreds and hundreds of years, right back to the 1600s and all that, the dip is almost mirrored, right? So the deeper you go, the faster you go, the faster you come up and the sharper you rise. So what people have got to understand is don't make a three to four month problem into an 18 month one. I see people with 50 staff cutting to 20, cutting to 15. And I'm like, look, you're not leaving yourself enough capacity to take advantage of the bounce when it comes. If you're going to like do well out of a recession, you need to be there in the first place. Mm. So I think people just make the quick, decisive actions now. But when it comes to actually cutting staff, remember you still need to be at a level to take advantage of the up, of, of the um, the uptick. Yeah. So. Um, but well, there is an argument. Like, there's an argument that. that staff are going to be available when when this happens like do you know it's not going to be a shortage of candidates in a market right so it's going to become a job-led market 
Yeah. Well, it's been gonna... a led market for so long. It's going to be job led now. So you need to be providing value to the clients, mapping the market now to see who's there. The thing is, people for in times like these, people forget about candidates. Yeah. They forget about good candidates. You should be getting a message out now to your candidates. The market saying, if you're a candidate who's worried about your job, you should be speaking to me. Yeah. You should be coming to me and saying, I think we're going to go bust. What can I do? But people don't realize you might be able to take, let's say, for example, supermarkets are going crazy right now. You might be able to take someone out of a reach, out of someone that works for, I don't know, Waterstones who's going to go and put them into Morrison's who's going like that. Yeah. Like transferable skills across markets is something a recruiter should be able to work out. You might take market, a marketing person out of someone who's really not doing well at all and put them in a, in a business that needs a marketing person to get the word out. Yeah. So yeah. it's just understanding that a recruiter has more answers than they probably get credit for. And yeah. us as recruiters should be shouting about that just now and saying, come to me if you're worried about your job. And put you into market stuff on the yeah, 100%. I think, the, again, to me, this is the even more reason why I think niching down is so important. Because if you know your market well, you know your niche, you know your candidate base, you can, you can really stand out as an authority and as a support figure. If you are a we do anything for anyone type scenario, then you're just fucking running around a bucket, an empty bucket, not knowing where to start. Um, Ryan, I'm going to leave you, mate, because you've got time, you've got stuff to do. This is only a short, sharp conversation, but. Thanks for taking the time, mate, in, in what's a hectic time for everyone. Um, if anyone wants to reach out to you, you're happy, obviously, even if it's just questions, obviously, you, you're happily showing what Odro can do, but uh, it might not be anything about that. It might just be, look, what, what are your customers saying and doing and how do we evolve? You're open for that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just get me on LinkedIn or ryan at odro.co.uk. Okay. All right, mate. Nice one. I'll get that sorted out. So, guys, thanks for listening. Short, sharp episode today. Hope we're bringing you value every single day and we're helping you navigate what's going on. I'll be back again tomorrow with another update. Stay safe. Speak soon.